Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you all are well. So, welcome back. Today, we are going to discuss about our new topic that is from the unit cell only. We are going to discuss it further. In the previous video, we have discussed about the seven crystal systems, types of unit cells and the crystal lattice. Now, today we are going to discuss about the number of atoms in unit cell and the density of unit cell, that how we can find the density of unit cell. So, let's start. Now, the first thing is the number of the atoms in the unit cell. Now, how to find the numbers of the atoms? Because you know that the constant particles are always present in the unit cell and those constant particles may be molecules, may be ion, may be anything. But they are forming that unit cell. So, actual how many number of atoms are forming a certain type of a unit cell? We have to find it. Why I am saying that? Just see that simple cubic unit cell now this is the primitive unit cell we are having that is simple cubic unit cell now in this case that is in case of simple cubic unit cell already we have discussed that the particles are occupying only the corner positions like this 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 only the corner positions are occupied by the particles now when the constant particles which are occupying the corner position Actually, it looks like that there are total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 particles are present in a unit cell. But it's a 3-dimensional structure. And we all know this unit cell is going to repeat in all possible direction. That is upward, downward, in every direction. So when it is going to repeat in every possible direction, then only it will generate a crystal lattice. It means in every possible direction a unit cell will be present then in such case what is going to happen suppose this is our corner particle then this corner particle will be con will be given in giving its contribution to eight unit cell because many unit cells are together so this corner particle is going to give its contribution to eight unit cell that is it is going to be divided into eight part like I have shown you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, when you divide it in axis, it means one unit cell here, 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 here. At the top, you can have 4, and bottom, you can have 4 in all direction. Then it means a corner particle will be giving its contribution to 8 unit cells. Now, in such case, what is going to happen? Only this much portion of a corner particle is actually contributing for a specific unit cell only this much portion okay so it means only one by eighth part of a constant particle is contributing to the of a corner particle i'm saying is contributing to the specific unit cell so in case of a simple cubic unit cell the number of atoms can be determined as number of atoms will be equivalent to 1 by 8 why we are taking 1 by 8 because on one particle is contributing only its 1 by 8th part to a specific unit cell and as we know there are total 8 constant particles present in the corner so when you take 1 by 8 of 8 it will come 1 it means in case of simple cubic unit cell only one atom is present okay Understood? Because only 1 by 8th part of a constant particle, that is corner particle, is contributing to the unit cell. So, it means the simple cubic will be having only 1 by 8 into 8 equivalent to 1 atom. So, only 1 atom is present in case of simple cubic unit cell. Now, we move to the body centered cubic. Now, see students. In case of body centered cubic, little bit of uh, memorization, like all the particles are occupying corner position as in the case of the simple cubic also, but one particle is present in the center of the unit cell. As you can see, this particle is present in the center of the unit cell. Now, if a particle is present in a center of a unit cell, it means like a room is there and in the room in a center, a ball is present, a spherical ball is present because we are considering all the constant particles as a sphere. So it means that 
whole of that constant particle belongs to that unit cell only. It is not going to be shared by any other unit cell because it is present inside the unit cell in the center of a unit cell. Okay. So in such case, the number of atoms can be determined as number of atoms will be equivalent to 1 plus. Now what is this 1? 1 means the entire constant particle which is present inside the body centered cubic unit cell. Then corner particles are also present. Then the number of the corner particles are 8 but only they can contribute their 1 by 8 part to the unit cell. It means it will be 1 by 8 into 8. So it means the total will be coming equivalent to 2. So the number of atom in case of the body centered cubic is 2 only. Okay. So like that the simple cubic having one atom, body centered cubic having only two atoms. Now we move to the third type that is face centered unit cell. Face centered unit cell if you remember the particle corner particle will be as usual they are going to be present and occupying the corner positions but one particle will be present in the center of each face. The one you can see from the red red spheres which you can see here they all are present in the center of each face of a unit cell. So these are face centered one. Okay. So that was face centered unit cell. Now if you see suppose this is a face and in this face the sphere will be present like this then that sphere that is the centered the particle which is present in the center of the face will be shared by the adjacent unit cell because again I am saying unit cells are going to repeat in all possible direction. So the adjacent unit cell will be also sharing this sphere that is the particle which is present at the center of the face. So it means the contribution of the particle which is present in the center of the face for a specific unit cell will be only 1 by 2 as it is going to be shared by the adjacent unit cell also. The face of the adjacent unit cell is attached to the this unit cell also. So it means the sphere will be contributing the half part to one unit cell and half part to its adjacent unit cell. Okay. So in such case how we determine the number of atoms. So finding the number of atoms in such case will be equivalent to 1 by 2. Why we are taking 1 by 2? Because it is contributing only 1 by 2 to its specific unit cell. Then there are six faces present in a unit cell, in this cubic unit cell. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are such kind of six constant particles present. So it become one by two into six. Then as usual, the corner particles, they are contributing one by eighth part and there are eight corner particles. So when you calculate it, it become three plus one, that is four. So in case of the face centered cubic unit cell, there are four atoms present. Okay. In this case, four atoms, simple cubic, one atom, body centered because of the centered unit, uh, center constant particle, there are two atoms. In case of face centered as one by two part is contributed by the face centered particle to the specific unit cell. So there are total four atoms. So that is how we calculate the number of atoms in a unit cell, different type of unit cell. Okay. So now we are going to learn about the density of unit cell. That is very, very important. So let's discuss. Students, now we are going to discuss about the density of unit cell. Now it's a very, very important topic because from this part, the numerical can come. So let's see how to find the density of a unit cell. Now for finding the density of any substance, we use a formula that is density of a substance will be equivalent to the mass of a substance divided by its volume. Okay. So if you have to determine the density of unit cell, we'll be using the same formula that is mass of unit cell 
divided by the volume of unit cell it's a very simple thing mass of a unit cell divided by the volume of unit cell but the important thing that how to determine the mass in order to find the mass of unit cell we'll be using a formula that mass of an atom multiply by total number of atom now why we are multiplying the mass of an atom with total number of atom because we have we know that there are maybe different type of unit cells maybe simple cubic maybe body centered cubic maybe face centered cubic in such case the total number of atom is very very important in that particular specific unit cell so we will be using a formula mass of an atom divided by total number of atom but we know one more thing how to determine the mass of an atom for determining the mass of an atom we have to use the molecular mass of substance whatever the molecular mass of the substance is there we have to use that because we are provided with that only then molecular mass of a substance means it is a mass of how many atoms it is a mass of 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 atoms that is equivalent to avogadro number so if you have to determine the mass of an atom you have to take the ratio of a molecular mass of substance with avogadro's number okay so it means we will be using the formula as capital m which is molecular mass of substance and avogadro number which we are representing as na okay so it means the final formula for finding the mass of unit cell will be m divided by na and multiply by z where z means the number of atom okay suppose we considered this equation as 1 and this equation as 2 so when you put the value of equation number 2 in 1 then what you will find that a density which is represented by rho will be equivalent to m upon na multiplied by z now what is left volume of unit cell now we have considered all the unit cell as cube and in case of cube when you have to determine the volume of cube the formula is edge length whatever the edge length is there edge length cube so if we considered the edge length as a then the volume of the unit cell become a cube okay so this is going to be the final formula for finding the density of unit cell okay so m stand for molecular mass then z stands for number of atom then na stands for avogadro number and a stand for edge length while rho stand for density so that is how you can determine the density of any unit cell okay so this is a simple formula we are going to use to find the density of unit cell okay understand students so go through this formula because we are going to use later in when we are going to do numericals so that is all for today now next time when we are going to uh, have a video we'll be having a video for the packing efficiency uh, in a crystal lattice so we are going to discuss that so, so like my channel subscribe my channel and please press the bell icon goodbye students bye bye